to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the inauguration of the first transatlantic telegraph cable, a black tie event took place in New York. Our very own Martin Wark brings us this special report. Hello, I'm here at the New York Historical Society to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the deployment of the world's first subsea cable between the United Kingdom and the United States. At the Hibernia Atlantic reception, I spoke to two eminent academics, both of whom have a strong interest in telecoms, and I asked them to put the pioneering project into its historical context. The Cyrus Field in New York had a vision. Uh, his brother introduced him to a, a telegraph engineer who had failed to put a line across Newfoundland. The idea there being that the ships coming across the Atlantic would call at Newfoundland, pass on their news. It would be telegraphed by landline down to New York, giving a three or four day jump on the news. So the line across Newfoundland was the first step. And Cyrus looked at his globe, which was in his study, and said, well, if we're going to cross Newfoundland and come to New York, why don't we continue to Ireland? And uh, from then on, from 1854, until 1866, 12 years, he devoted himself full time, all his finances, all his energy, all his friends' money that he could persuade to part with, went into the Atlantic Cable Project. Cyrus Field, of course, made his first millions in other industrial areas, and once he got going with the idea of the cable, I think he, his imagination was, was seized by the vision of, the, of worldwide communications. There was a scientific debate that centered around how to make the cable work. Here you would have the young William Thompson, who would later be known as Sir William Thompson, and eventually become known as Lord Kelvin, uh, the same, one and the same person all the way through, but it would ultimately take this man to figure out the mathematics behind how signals went the great distance, two and a half miles below the surface of the ocean, 2,700 miles from Ireland to Newfoundland, distances never traversed by underwater telegraphy before 1858. Barney Thorvad Arson, the CEO of Hibernia Atlantic delivered the keynote address at the Transatlantic 150 reception and afterwards I asked him about the Victorian technological tour de force that changed the world. Thinking back 150 years and about the group of gentlemen that uh, took on the daunting task of laying a cable three or four thousand kilometers across the ocean, across the Atlantic, um, where the longest cable then had been laid 20 kilometers between England and France. It was absolutely a, a fantastic breakthrough and a major breakthrough. You know, 150 years of technology back then, seven strands of copper wrapped together to do telegraph at about, you know, 100 words per several hours and minutes. Uh, and now, with the, the new cables of the world, you can put the whole Library of Congress through in 63 milliseconds across the pond. The cable was in diameter about a, a, a couple of centimeters, or not even, uh, with uh, copper in the center carrying the the electricity carrying the signal. Um, it, it absolutely was an unproven technology. We're talking about something so historic. Uh, be, don't really think that people get the grasp of it until they're actually here and really have uh, been in this industry to really understand what, what happened 150 years ago. <laughs> 